Do you have worms in your soil? Do you want worms in your soil? Earthworms in your soil actually indicate you may have used earthworms for fishing, but they're useful in so many other ways. Earthworms raise the soil pH and they increase the soil fertility. Now, let's get it clear. We're not talking about the red wriggler or manure worm or the ones that you'll see in the compost pile. That's different species. And according to, depending on what source you look at, there's between 2,700 and 4,400 species of worms, earthworms. We're focusing on one, the night crawler the big nine to 30 centimeter long garden night crawler. Earthworms are an indicator of sufficient moisture, at least seasonally. And if you're in a sandy soil like we are, you probably noticed more ants than worms. That's normal. Ants and worms are on separate ends of the soil moisture spectrum. So wherever you have good moisture, you'll probably have, or you should have, or you could have more earthworms. And where you're on a drier, sandier soil, then you'll probably have more ants. Both worms and ants do the same role in the soil. They both create tunnels. You may have noticed ant tunnels, at least on the surface, and worm tunnels. So they both aerate and help air get in deeper in the soil. They both bring organic matter into the soil and they bring soil particles from deeper up to the surface. So their roles are very similar, just what soil type they choose, sand and ants, clay and worms, and anything in between, you'll probably have a mix of both. Did you know earthworms are an invasive species to the Americas, Australia, and New Zealand. They were not here before the white man. They were brought over in pots with some soil and earthworms, and they've since migrated across most of those continents. Earthworms are also a great indicator of sufficient organic matter. Material that falls from the trees, material that falls from grass clippings, all of this organic matter is basically what grows their food in their tunnel. So they have to have enough. And to give you an example, I once tried a little experiment because I was curious, how much organic matter can they actually bring into their tunnels? One night I was going out and I just decided I would try sprinkling some leaves on a patio stone, about one leaf deep, and I covered the stone. I was gone out for a few hours. The worms, it was evening, it was dark, and it was a rainy night. The worms would come out from the edge of the patio stone, grab a piece of leaf, and bring it into their tunnel. And in the space of about four hours, they cleaned the patio stone. I was quite amazed, thinking, wow, when they have it, they will just keep going to get it. It's like us. You're faced with a buffet. Hey, that seems good. I'll eat everything I like. Worms love organic matter. So don't waste your organic matter. And it's a great way to know that you're helping your earthworms get well fed. Have you ever seen an earthworm migration? You may think, earthworms don't migrate. Oh yes, they do. How else do you think they covered the whole continent? Well, they migrate. Some people have moved, some of them for sure, but the vast majority of the continent was covered simply by earthworms migrating. After a rain or during a rain, especially overnight, they will come out of their burrows and they can move a distance, a few meters. It's not like they're going one country to another, but they are going a distance. And multiply that by every rain, especially in the spring, or every time their conditions are right, cloudy, dark, because migration is always filled with perils. Have you ever seen animals migrating in the African plain? Well, there is a danger, so there's always a mass migration. Earthworms, the same. There are lots of birds that are always looking around. If they see an earthworm, they're not gonna pass up such a great meal. And so earthworms come out at night, when it's dark, when the conditions are really wet, that birds don't really wanna be out, it's just too wet. That's a migration across a space. 
It's not that surprising when you figure that they also have a vertical migration. In our climate, we have frost some years down to five feet or almost two meters. Worms do not tolerate being frozen. So they've got to go down below that level where it's not frozen and then come back up in the spring. They can move a few meters and moving this way or this way is not that much of a difference. In fact, it's a lot easier to move on the soil surface. One of the best indicators that earthworms are is that you don't use synthetic fertilizers or synthetic pesticides. Lots of studies have shown that these synthetics will have an adverse or negative impact on their reproductive rate, how fast they grow, how many there are, even on their enzyme activity. Overall, they, it's not a good thing. And the worst culprit is synthetic fungicides and insecticides. So please try to keep away from those products if you want your earthworms to really increase. If you think your soil could use some improvement, check out our soil course at permaculture.study and start for free. Earthworms are a great indicator of a fertile and healthy soil. They're the canary in the coal mine. Look at them as the ones you see while the millions of species in the soil of soil life you don't see. They're microscopic. So use them to know, hmm, I got a lot of earthworms. I must have a lot of soil life and aim for that, aim to have a high population of earthworms. Supply your earthworms with moisture, organic matter, and avoid using synthetic fertilizers and pesticides.